Okay, so in this video, we will try to get a general understanding about how we solve a structure, how we draw the SFT and bending moment diagram of a structure. This is a very important thing for civil engineering students. It's the basics for other engineering faculties as well. So we will try to cover it in a brief way so everyone could get a general understanding on how to solve a structure and draw their SFT and BMD, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So in civil engineering, we have basically two types of structural analysis problem. So if I just try to illustrate that structural analysis. We basically have structures that are statically indeterminate, statically determinate. And, do we and then we have statically indeterminate structures. Statically indeterminate. So what is the general idea about this statically determinate and indeterminate structures? We need to understand that in statically determinate structures, in statically determinant structures, we can solve for the reactions, then draw the shear force and bending moment diagram by using only the equations of statics. What are the equations of statics? The summation of force in the x direction must be equals to zero. Summation of force in the y direction must be equals to zero. And moment at any point, moment at any point must be equals to zero. This part ensures that the structure is not moving left or right. This part ensures the structure is not moving up and down. And this part ensures that the structure is not rotating. So if we satisfy these three conditions, then we can say that the structure is in statics. And if we can determine the structure, uh, solve the structure with only these three equations, then we say that the structure is statically determinant. Most of our problems will fall into this category. And then there is structurally indeterminate structures. For the indeterminate structures, there are approximate methods. And there are actual methods that we can use to find the reactions, shear force diagram, bending moment diagram for the indeterminate structures as well. So actual methods. The approximate methods, they work separately for vertical load, gravity load, dead load and live load, this kind of things. And the approximate method, this calculate the effect of lateral load separately. We have two methods basically for this. One is cantilever method and another was the portal method. And then we superimpose these two. To get the final result okay then we super position the results from these two equations and get the final actual analysis results and for the actual methods there are basically four methods these methods are a bit complex to describe in short but if i have to say something then i can say that these methods use the stiffness characteristics of our structure and then uses these properties to systematically determine the reactions SFD and BMD of any structure. It could be beam, it could be frame, it could be determinate, it could be indeterminate. If we follow this step-by-step -step procedure, we will be able to find the reaction, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. And in any type of computer application, like ETAPS, SAP, space gas, we use these methods to find out the reactions, SFD and BMD diagrams. So anyway, um, we will first consider this part only. This part only, where we analyze statically determinant and indeterminate structure. Then, in the structural part, structural part, we have two types of structure. One is beam. This is the basics for everything. We start with beams for everything. Analyzing, designing, everything will start with beams. Then we'll move on to frames. Frame will basically have columns and beams all together in a system and there will be rigid connections, rigid supports and everything else. So we will first start with beam because this is the starting point or foundation for everything we will learn in this part. 
okay so let's take a beam so this is our beam it will have two supports one is a pin joint and one is a roller the pin joint acts like a hinge what is a hinge hinge is like a door it can rotate but it cannot translate this beam it cannot move left or right due to this one but it can rotate right it can rotate if i just move this one let's say this is not here then we can do this the hinge will not resist this kind of movement but if we try to translate it if we try to move it right or left the hinge will definitely resist this and we will we cannot also move it up and down the hinge will also resist this as well but on the other hand this roller this roller does not resist the left and right movement okay the roller does not resist the left and right movement it works like a wheel it can roll around but it cannot go up and down okay so it will only resist the up and down motions not the left and right motion it will also allow you to rotate about that point it will also allow you to rotate about that point so it will not give any resistance to rotation and not any resistance to downward lateral movement it will only give resistance to upward movement so we will get a reaction in the upward direction and in this hinge we will get a reaction in the upward direction and right or left so at first we will have to assume a direction so let's say we have a reaction in the right direction which is ax and a reaction in the upward direction which is ay and a reaction in the upward direction in this point which is by there will be some loads in the p so let's say we have a load here the load is 10 kilo newtons and the general dimension of the beam is like this here is let's say 5 meters and this is let's say 10 meters okay so this is the general structure of our problem what we have to find is ay ax and by the three reaction components and then we will have to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram so in general for beam problems if there is no horizontal force or inclined force no horizontal or inclined force let me write it down no horizontal inclined load we can assume that the ax bx that means all the horizontal components of the reactions they will be zero all the horizontal components of the reactions will be zero so in this case we have only a vertical load which is acting downwards we don't have any inclined or horizontal loads so there will be no ax and by components so from this we can directly say that the ax it will definitely be equals to zero because there is no load that will try to move the beam left or right so there won't be any resistance needed to stop the beam from sliding so ax will be zero it's the given then we can take moment about any point so the point need to be chosen such that the distance of the loads from that point is known so we could have chosen this point but the problem is that from this point we don't know the distance of the 10 kN load now we, yes we can define that like we can say that this point is around 3 meter away from this and this point is around 2 meter away from this and then we can do all the calculations that we will do now but it's better to assume the point better to take the point in a location which is already known and a location from where the distance of the other forces are known so i have chosen this point as my reference point let's say this point is point a so now we will say that the moment about point a will be zero and i'm taking the clockwise direction to be positive what does this clockwise direction mean the clockwise direction means that if this is our beam and i have taken this point as my reference point any load like this load will try to move this beam in this direction right for this load the beam will rotate like this so it is rotating in this direction 
So in this direction, it is the clockwise direction. So this beam, this load will have a moment that is acting in the clockwise direction. And we, if we have this kind of moment, we will take this moment as positive moment. Again, for this reaction, by it's acting in the upward direction. So this is by. If we analyze this, then we can see that py tries to rotate the beam in this direction, right? For the force, the beam will move upward. So upward movement gives a rotation about this direction, which is in anticlockwise. So this anticlockwise movement will be taken as a negative moment. Okay, so it will be taken as negative moment. We will always free the beam of any other point. We will only pin that in our reference point and then we'll try to see if the force rotates the beam in clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction. If the beam rotates in clockwise direction, we will take that moment to be positive and if the beam rotates in anti-clockwise direction, we'll take the beam to be uh, moment to be negative. So this is what we mean about mean by saying that a clockwise moment is positive. Now, let's analyze the problem. For this point, Ay is acting directly in this point, so there is no lateral distance, no lateral distance, the longitudinal distance from this point of this force. So the moment will be Ay multiplied by distance zero. For this load 10, there is a distance, right? There is a distance which is 5 meters, and the load is acting in such a way that it creates a moment in the clockwise direction. So the moment will be positive because it is in clockwise direction and the value will be the value of load multiplied by the value of distance. The distance is 5 meter from this point, from this point, 5 meters. So we'll take 5 here. Then for the by load, it is acting in such a way that it rotates the beam in anti-clockwise direction, right? Rotates the beam in anti-clockwise direction. So the moment will be minus negative value will be by multiplied by distance from the point. The distance of the load from the point is 5 plus 10 which is 15 meters so we'll give here 15 meters and all this must be equals to 0 so from this we can see that this part amounts to be 0 so it's 0 then 15 into by if we take this to the right side then this will be 10 into 5 then we can divide by 15 so 10 into 5 divided by 15 5 can be cancelled with 3, so the answer is 10 by 3. 10 by 3, which comes out to be 3.33. So this is our value of By. Now, the direction of By. It was an arbitrary choice by us. We could have taken in in the downward direction, but we chose to, to take in the upward direction. It may not always be correct. So we have to find out the direction as well. To find the direction, we have to see the value of the by that we found. The value of the by we found is positive. If it is positive, then the direction we chosen was right. If the value was negative, then the direction we chosen was wrong and it needs to be opposite. So in case we found that by is minus 3.33, then it would mean that by is acting in the downward direction. Okay, so this is how we find the direction. So for this case, because by is positive, then the direction we took, it was the right direction. And finally, we can say that by is acting in the upward direction. Okay, so by is done as well. Now we'll find out the last part, which is ay. And for this, we will use the equation summation of fy equals to zero. And summation of fy equals to zero we will take the upward direction as positive direction and right direction as positive direction although we don't need the right direction because no horizontal and inclined loads are here so as the upward direction is positive we can say that ay is positive so positive ay 10 is negative so minus 10 and if by is positive so plus by all this must be equals to 0 because there is no other vertical loads left so now we can say that ay equals to 10 minus by we already know the value of by which is 3.33 so the value comes out to be 6.67 kilo newtons
So th this is also positive and this indicates that the direction we have we chosen was right. So the direction of AY would be the upward direction. So now what we have is we have solved all the reaction components. We don't have any unknown reactions left. This is the first part of analyzing any structure. We have to find the reactions. Okay. So now we will draw the SFD and BMD diagram. This is a straightforward process, but there are many other complex processes. We will only focus on the simple process that we need to follow for beams. For the other structures, when there will be uh, when the loading conditions will be more complex, we will do other methods as well. Okay, so this was our structure. We have found all the reactions. There were basically two reactions, one in the two in the upward direction on the both ends. Ay was 6.67. So this value was 6.67 kilonewtons. And this value was 3.33 kilonewtons. And this was 10 kilonewtons. Okay, this was 10 kilonewtons. The distance were also measured, which was 5 meters and 10 meters. So to draw the SFD and BMD diagram, shear force and bending moment diagram, we will need to extend these portions. Then for the SFD, we will draw a line. For the BMD, we will draw a line. These are basically the graphing x-axis. Graphing axis. One is x-axis and one is the y-axis. So for SFD, for the SFD, we will see that 6.67 is acting in the upward direction will move the load to 6.67 in the upward direction. So this value will be 6.67 in the upward direction. Okay. This value is 6.67 kilonewtons in the upward direction. Then from here to here there is no loads. There are no loads. If there is no load then there will be a straight line in the SFD diagram. There will be a straight line in the SFD diagram. Okay. Then there is a 10 kilonewton load. Already we have a positive 6.67 kilonewtons. 10 kilonewton is acting in the downward direction. So we have a minus 10. So this turns out to be minus 3.33. We have a downward movement here. And the value in this point is 3.33. Okay. Then from this point to this point, we don't have any loads. So because there we, we don't have any loads, we can say the SMT will be like this. So this portion is positive, this portion is negative. Then in this point, we have an upward force which is positive 3.33. So we can add that here, 3.33 and the resultant will be 0. So if we connect this, the result will be 0. And this is a must for any SFD or BMD diagram of beams. The end and starting, they must be equals to 0. At the end and at the start, there should not be any shear force left. Okay, they must be 0. Okay, so basically this was our shear force diagram. Now, from the shear force diagram, we will draw the bending moment diagram. So in this point, we will try to see if the structure has any concentrated moments. Concentrated moments mean if there is any reaction in this point, in a moment. Okay. So we can see that in this structure, there is no moment in this point, right? There is no moment in this point and it's not possible because this point is a hinge. It will not resist any rotation. So if we doesn't resist any rotation it will not give any reaction moments okay so there is no moment in this point then in the shear force diagram we can see a rectangle we can see a rectangle and the line that we see is a horizontal line right it's a horizontal line so if there is a horizontal line in the SFT diagram then there will be a inclined line in the BMD diagram if there is a horizontal line in the SFD diagram, there will be inclined line in the BMD diagram. So, because we are sure that this is going to be a line, we only need two points to connect that point, right? We only need two points to make the line. One point we already have in this point, which is zero. The second point will be around here. We want to know the value of that point, right? So, to understand the value of the point, what we have to do is, in this point, we have a moment of zero then we have to add this area at this area what is the value of this area because this is a rectangle the value will be 6.67 multiplied by the width which is 5 okay and this is positive because the diagram is positive so if we calculate this part we get is okay. 
Okay, I should have a calculator here. Let's see. It works. Okay, it's working. Uh, so the value will be 6.67 multiplied by 5, which is 33.35. And this value is positive, so there will be a point in this point. The value will be 33.35, and we need to connect this point through a straight line. Okay, so this is done. Then in this point, we don't have a count any concentrated moments okay we don't have any concentrated moments so this point will be here this point will not shift if there was any concentrated moments here present then this point would have gone either upward or downward depending on the direction of the moment so anyway this is not the case in here so then for the next part we also see that there is a horizontal line in the SFD diagram in this part as well so there will be an inclined line in the BMD diagram in this part and the uh, to understand the inclined line we need to find the two points one point we already have in this point which is 32.35 and the next point will be somewhere around here okay so to find the value of the next point what we have to do is find out the area of this point look at the sign of the area and if the sign is positive then we have to add the value to it if the sign is negative then we have to subtract the value so in this point we have we, we can see that the diagram is already negative so we have to subtract the value of the area from 33.35 so the value will be minus minus the height is 33.33 3.33 and the width is 10 so if we add these two values then what we get is 3. Point, oh sorry 33.35 33.35 then minus 3.33 multiplied by 10 so this value is 0 0.05 which is a rounding error so we can consider this as 0 okay this we can consider this as 0 we have taken 6.67 here which turns out to be a rounding error so we don't have to consider that 0 0.02 okay so in this point the value is 0 and in this point the value is 33.33 we have to connect this to point to make the line and this will be our BMD diagram okay this will be our BMD diagram so this is the SFD diagram and this is the PND diagram. This is our final target. Now I want to be bring your attention to the fact that there are many other. Now I want to bring your attention to the fact that there are many other conventions to draw this SFD and BMD diagram. Like I have taken positive in the upward direction. Some might take negative in the downward up, uh, negative in the upward direction. It's completely fine as long as you understand what you are doing so the convention that I followed here is the compression site uh, diagrams will be drawn in the compression site to say this like that diagram will be diagrams will be now so we have already done that so diagrams are drawn in compression site drawn in compression site so this is the general convention that I followed what does this thing mean for the 10 kN load for the 10 kN load the beam will bend like this right the beam will bend like this so if you take the beam and make it a little thicker so it's easier to understand the beam will basically act like this right the beam will basically act like this so if this is a neutral axis where the fibers don't stretch they remain of the same length then apart from this neutral axis everything every little fiber of this beam will be compressed because the length is shortened and below this every little fiber will be stretched they will be in tension so if I just mark the portions where I am highlighting with blue they are in compression And the portions highlighted in red, they are in tension. They are in tension, right? So the diagram will always be on the side where there is compression. 
So if we look at our diagram, the diagram is completely in the upward direction, right? Completely in the upward direction because the upward direction is completely in compression. Sometimes there are instances where the structure will be like this. If I just exaggerate it, to make you understand. This happens in rigid columns where the indeterminate structures are present. This may be the case. This may be the case that for this part, this portion is in compression, this portion is in tension, and for the middle part, this portion is in compression, this portion is in tension, and then this portion will be in compression, and this portion will be in tension. For this portion, if the situation is like this, our diagram will be like this. If I draw a simple diagram, then our diagram will be something like this. Not necessarily the value will be like this. If I just make this a little. Okay, let's decrease the opacity. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, if this is the condition of our structure, then our bending moment diagram will be something like this. If this is our axis, then because there is compression in this part, our diagram will come into this portion. Then it will move upward, then it will move downward, and then it will be like this. Where there is compression, the diagram will always be pointing that side. The diagram is always be pointing that side. Okay, so this is what we mean when the diagrams are drawn in compression side. This will be cleared in further examples. It's very hard to understand in one example. We took several years to understand this concept. So it will all take time. You have to be patient. You have to do a lot of problems. Then we will get the full understanding of these types of problems. In this video, we have tried to take a little overview of how to draw SFD BMD diagram and how to analyze a structure. In the subsequent videos, we will try to solve more complex problems where the SFD BMD diagrams will be more complicated and more concepts will need to be taken care of. Okay, so this is the end of this video.